to shut down his money. No, they don't. Mm. You get the challenge, and I hear people praying all the time saying, We're going to campaign against drug houses. You better be ready for the backlash when you start speaking against. I'm not saying be scared of it because we're supposed to take authority, but you better be ready for what Satan's going to try to dart at you when you start taking authority over territory. See, and the disciples came and they took authority over the territory. All right. She was mocking them. The Bible says that they cast that spirit out of her. Now, now, watch this. Because you would think the casting out of the devil would bring glory and bring praise. Well. Uh, but the Bible says what well, they got with their trouble well, they laid their hands on them. And they begin to seize them and they begin to beat them. And after they beat them, they threw them in prison. My Lord. After they threw them in prison, they bound them up. And the Bible says, but at midnight. Can I tell you something? It has to reach a point where we change positions even though the situation didn't change. It has to reach a point in our lives where the situation hasn't changed, but I'm changing. All right. In one part of the text, they're victorious. In the next part of the text, they're prisoners and they're being beaten. Mm -hmm. But then the text takes another shift. Look at the neighbor and say, you got to take a shift. You got to take a shift. So you got to be ready to shift in just a quick of a twinkling of an eye. Yes, you got to be ready to shift. Yes, sir. The Bible says at midnight. Midnight is significant because midnight represents a new day. That's true. It, it represents the closing of one era uh -huh. and the opening of another. Yes. And so at the close of this era, they decided that everything we went through on this side, we're going to leave it on this side. Mm. But when the next era opens, which is 12 or 1, at midnight, the Bible says, and Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang praises. In other words, the belly aching is over. Forget about the pain. It's a New day, so I gotta change yes. this position. Yes, that's right. Amen. When the day changes, will you change? Our problem is the day has changed, but our behavior hasn't. Oh my. The day has changed, but our confession hasn't. The day has changed, but our attitude hasn't. The time has switched, but we're still the same. But you gotta take a, a page out of these men of God's book, which the Bible says at midnight. Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises. The Bible says, watch this. And the Bible says, and there was a suddenly and a shaking and an earthquake. You see, when you come into real praise, it'll shake something up. Yes, it will. I don't care how Ordinary you act, praise brings you to a place of extraordinary. Uh -huh. That's why the enemy tries to put a heavy spirit in the atmosphere when it's time for praise and worship because he don't want nothing to be shooken up. Well, because when saints go to praising, stuff go to happen. Mm. You remember in Second Chronicles chapter twenty when King Jehoshaphat and his army was getting ready for the battle, and the Bible says they sent praisers and they begin to praise God. They didn't send the army in first; they sent the praise team in first. If you want to disarm your enemy, if you want to do a spiritual strategy, you got to send the praisers in. That's why when they got together, they agreed to send Judah first. Because when you send praise, it disarms our enemy. All right. The problem with a lot of churches is they don't know how to send praise first. Come on. Because you can't send praise and worry at the same time. All right. You can't send praise and pain together. You gotta drop the pain so you can send the praise. Yeah. Well, a lot of the, the thing is a lot of people wanna keep reminded about what they went through and belly aching about what they don't have and belly aching about what they're going through instead of closing it out and opening it again and shifting it into a praise. Well they sent those praisesly. The Bible says that they begin to praise God, to sing the song, praise.
praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. forever. Yes, sir. And then the next thing they know, the Bible says God sent ambushes. See, I like God because he gets involved with praise. Because praise illuminates the atmosphere. God gets involved with real praises. I've never seen a real praise that God don't help. Well, you can have all the struggle, the trouble you want to have. You can have all the struggle you want to have. But ask any real praiser. And you follow the life of a real praiser. And even though they not struggle, God always shows up. Because God will never neglect or abandon a praiser. All right. If you got a praise, God's got an answer. All right. Uh -huh. See, that's what's wrong. People say, I don't have an answer. That's because you don't have a praise. When you got an unconditional, all-together, anytime praise, God has an answer. See, David said it like this, I will bless the Lord at all times, okay. and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. See, and a continual praise gets a continual answer. Research the life of David. God always gave David an answer. Even though he messed up with Uriah, amen, and Uriah's wife, even though he numbered the people, and even though he did a lot of stuff, you always read David always got an answer and a reply from God because he was a continual praiser. All right. <laughs> so they sent ambushes. God sent ambushes. The Bible 